Hey guys, today is June 7, 2023, and the news is sponsored by Analog Spotlight, a group of photographic retailers and manufacturers who have joined together to support analog photography, the photographic media, and help keep analog photography thriving worldwide. The brands are Camera Dactyl, Cosmo Photo, Chroma Cameras, Rebeni Labs, Reality So Subtle, Intrepid Cameras, Pixelator, Brooklyn Film Camera, Ondo Camera, Standard Cameras, 20th Century Cameras, Pictoria Graphica, Analog Wonderland, Cinestill, Large Format Camera Store, Carmetita Film Lab, RH Designs, RZ Mago, and Alvandi Cameras. So, you might be wondering, why hasn't there been any news? Basically, life got in the way. Why the set looks like this? Basically, the life got in the way. So, I have so many news to share with you guys that I've just decided either I put a news out now and I clear the slate and I don't make the set look good, or, uh, yeah, basically we'll never get done. So this is action-packed news. Lots of things that I might miss. Lots of things that I won't go into detail. But I want to say something. If there's any piece of news that you think you want to hear more about, please leave a comment below. The highest pinned ones or upvoted ones will be the ones I'll try to talk more in depth about. And there's a lot to talk about. So let's get straight into it. First of all, Kodak Laris is for sale. I made a whole podcast about this, but let's basically explain Kodak Laris or Kodak when the bankruptcy funded Laris as the UK pension fund, blah, 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 guarantee. And this created Laris. They took care of the still photography film, which means our portrait, our ektar, our triax, all this stuff, but also chemicals. Then they sold the chemical division to this company called Sino Promise that we'll talk in a minute. And this uh, Kodak Laris has been the distributor and the marketing uh, part of the still photography part of Kodak. The one making the film, the one making the motion picture film, the one in the US is Kodak Rochester or Eastman Kodak or something like that. Uh, that one is not for sale. Alaris is for sale. Um, I don't know why. There's no real news on the why or the how, but my guess is it's not profitable as Alaris itself. And I hope and keep my fingers crossed that maybe Kodak, Eastman Kodak, Rochester, the ones making the film in the factory, you know, everything will reabsorb Alaris and they can be all one under one roof. But then we have the Sino Promise. So it seems like Sino Promise is going bankrupt. Sino Promise is a company based in China that bought basically the chemical division of Kodak from Alaris. And this is almost like, you know, it sounds like a, you know, soap opera and started manufacturing or was manufacturing chemistry and also paper for many labs and so on. It's been a disaster ever since this happened. I don't know if it's been because of the pandemic or it's been about materials, about the Chinese government or imports or tariffs or Fuji or who knows what. But basically, the it's China, so obviously you've seen no promise is not going to flag up like, worry, we went bankrupt, we're closing. But major distributors, stores around the world are saying there's no more Kodak chemistry. Before you go all crazy, first, Kodak chemistry has been made by everybody but Kodak for many, many years. And the recipes are probably still part of Sino Promise or someone else, and they probably won't go to waste. There are also lots of copies of D76 and Dectols out there. So a lot of other places are pitching in to try to produce this stuff. But remember, we still have Ilford chemical, uh, chemical line, and we have Adox chemical line, and we have Freestyle with a chemical line, and we have Flick Photo with their chemical line, and we have all these other chemical lines, Bellini and others that are still around. So film is not going anywhere. Let's go to the next one. We have Reflex uh, Lab Trim Cutter. So Reflex has been doing all kinds of cool gizmos from a semi-automatic spooling machine from bulk rolls to like trim cutters for the leader for your film, like the Reservoir, but one that's actually like a scissor one that actually works really well with like a uh, Santa color or film that has a stronger base. They've made what I call the lab trim cutter, which is the 
in the beginning of the roll if you're re-spooling. So you click it and it's easier to reload reloadable canisters. There's some people using the reloadable canisters, uh, like I think Lomography is doing it. Some factories in China are using it. Uh, Flick Film is using it in Canada and I guess some other places. So this is the addition that they've made. Then we have FOMA with the Ortho 120 film in 400 ISO. This was something someone hinted to me a while, while ago. I put it in the news and someone said, it can't be done. No ortho film is 400. I am no chemical expert or film emulsion expert, but it seems that Koda, I mean, sorry, FOMA, has announced this 400 speed black and white orthochromatic film in 120. You can buy it now from Maco Direct and other stores, plus FOMA themselves, probably other stores in your local neighborhood. Support your local neighborhood store if there's any. Um, it's pretty cool to have. Um, then we go to FOMA. While I was researching the FOMA Ortho, I found out the FOMA sells DX code stickers. If you are one of those bulk loading guys, uh, you know that DX film stickers used to be a thing. They disappeared, but it seems FOMA has brought them back in a couple ISOs, not that many. But basically these are stickers that have metal conductive whatever, so that your DX code reader in your point and shoot camera or super cool SLR that's ugly and fantastic uh, will read your uh, ISO and will, or DX code and will do what it has to do with the roll. That's pretty cool. I don't think anybody's talked about it. Then we have our big friends in Ilford with their weird and strange ultra large format window order. So Ilford once a year, thank you Ilford for doing this once a year, does all the quirky, weird, random, ultra large format film sizes for anybody to order for the minimum quantity of one box. Do remember that Kodak does this too, but you have to put like $15,000 to special order or sign up the Canham cameras and go into an order. But Ilford does it one box uh, minimum, certain like emotions and sizes, there has to be a global amount because, you know, it needs to be, but it's pretty cool. It's open now. Talk to your retailers. Ilford has a list of who's in the partnering program. Uh, so you can, you know, pitch in and get your 14 by 17 uh, HP5 to shoot those, you know, Yosemite landscapes. So then we go into Diva. Diva has a price increase. Diva is a processor made in Italy. Price increase coming, just in case you wanted to know. The price increase will be in the picture I'm showing now. No idea if it's 1%, 2%, 10%, whatever it is, everything's gone up, so it's understandable. Then we have someone's made a 3D printed motion picture camera. And it's not the first one we've seen, but this one's super cool for a couple of things. First of all, all 3D printed, except obviously for some motors and stuff, but it created a, like a super eight frame in a roll of 35. And you would might think, well, that's a waste of space. Like 35 is like 24 millimeters tall. Uh, we're talking, it's shooting in the cinema scope. So, or cinema orientation. So like half frame size, but if it's super eight, it's only shooting that small size. Well, he's made like a movable shutter hole or whatever you call that to expose the roll in different spots. It does four swipes or exposures in the roll. So you're getting four strips of film with exposed, which means that one roll of film, I think three rolls of film is like the equivalent of a 50 foot Super 8, whatever. It's super cool. Honestly, if I could do more than grab a screwdriver and, you know, grab a hammer and put a nail on the wall. I would build this, but I am not good with that kind of stuff. No 3D printing for me. Talking about super clever people, we have Smarter Every Day Video 3 in the Kodak uh, factory. Like I said, at the early parts of the news, so Kodak Rochester, the one that finishes the film, that makes the emulsion, that does all this stuff, has let uh, Smarter Every Day uh, create a series of three videos. One was the emulsion making, uh, or the chemical emulsion extrusion, well, the base of it. Then the other one was the, the emulsion with the laminar flow. And the third one was the finishing, which is basically how they perforate the film and they slice the film into pancakes and all this stuff I talk in the news so many times that maybe people scratch their head and say, what did he say, pancakes? Uh, I'm hungry for breakfast. But basically it's 
really cool to see the whole operation for Kodak. You can get a glimpse of the numbers, the people that are hiring or they've hired and the production capacity and problems they've been running into and the passion that people put into working at Kodak. That's one thing I always will say working here in Finland for a store that actually refurbishes, fixes and, you know, is trying to fix the future of film cameras is nobody's in this anymore for the money. It's basically for passion. Um, so I can't even afford socks myself, but uh, basically it's all for passion and seeing Kodak employees have been working there for over like longer than I've been alive and still super passionate about what they're doing is really cool. So thanks for this video. I'll leave the link below if you haven't watched it, you're missing out. And then in Saturn news, we have Hasselblad discontinuing their H series of cameras. So as you know, Hasselblad became extremely famous with the V series. That's the 501 or the 500 CM, 500 C, you know, the modular camera we all come and love uh, to love. But the H was the one they made with Fuji. It's the AF1 that has like the grip integrated and it has like a bunch of stuff. They converted that to digital and it's been living for, I guess, a couple of decades pretty much now. And now I guess mirrorless is here to stay and they've discontinued the H series. So I guess no more cameras. I don't think any more lenses, probably whatever remaining stock will get out the door. And after that, it's gone. So yeah, sadly, H is gone. It was the last Hasselblad film camera per se. Um, then we have double uh, film with a glitch film. Double film specializes in special effects films, that's what I call them, which are films with pre-exposures or patterns or colors and all that stuff. Glitch is kind of like a VHS glitch. Honestly, I don't really think it looks very realistic, but some people like uh, special effects films. You have it from double film now. Then we have from Stearman Press the SP445 uh, I guess, or 465, because now they're making a six tank one, six sheet one, nine by 12 uh, inserts. They have basically, I think, included a 3D printed file. It basically, if you're shooting four by five or nine by 12, it's the European size, was a little uh, narrower. Yeah, narrower. Well, in the width side, it was shorter. Uh, instead of 10 centimeters and nine centimeters, I don't know that, four inches to like 3.75 inches and two eighths. Um, basically these are like little frames that hold your nine by 12 film on their, uh, film holders for developing film. So it's like the inserts. This is pretty cool. So you can do nine by 12 on the steering pin press. It's my favorite tank for non-rotary developing four by five, I guess nine by 12 too. Um, then we have Zeiss with a discontinued lens for like a, a M. The ZM 85 F4 is discontinued. Honestly, probably not a very popular lens. It's an F4, which, you know, people long lenses want kind of like cool depth of field and Leica sells like a 91.25, I guess people want that. But this 85 is kind of weird. It was for the Zeiss Icon had frame lines for 85, but it's discontinued. F4 is long gone. You can go to 90 mil from other brands or 75 if you want. Then we have the, this is the worst name. There's so many bad names on film photography sometimes. Astrohori light meter, basically a light meter made in China for your cold shoe, hot shoe, non-light metered camera. It's available wherever you can find it, but it's come out. It's, I don't think it's very nice, but yeah, if you want to buy it, it's up there. Then talking about flick film, there's flick film Chrome 100. This is what, when Kodak announced that they had done 35 mil film, for I think it was the TV show Euphoria, which I haven't watched, and they were doing some cross-processing or bleach bypass, who knows what, uh, super cool stuff. But a lot of people, they started offering it in mega cans for 35 mil if you wanted to shoot cinema. And cinema's perforated a little different. It does work on film cameras, but you know, it's for motion picture. Well, flick film is basically buying these pancakes or whatever from uh, Kodak E100 and spooling it for color uh, Chrome 100. It is cheaper than Ektachrome, uh, than brrr, Ektachrome yes, uh, and it's available now from them and probably a lot of partners for Flick Film. Pretty cool on them. Then we have the Filmomat Lite. If you've been following Filmomat, they have been doing high-end processors with very low yield. He did modify it to have more yield, 
But one thing that was hard is the price point. It was around four to five thousand. I think it's four thousand four hundred or four thousand euros for the for the film mat. And that didn't really reach, you know, the entry level guy that wants to develop with more than just like, you know, inverting their own tank. Well, they've come out with what they are calling the Filmomat Light. I really like the concept. I have one behind the camera right now, which I will be testing and reviewing. Uh, Lucas basically sent it for me to do a review. It's not paid. He won't watch it before anybody else. But I have to say, first impressions is really nice. This is a water bath that holds a sous vide, doesn't come included, with three bottles or four, I think it's three, that do come included. And they're the, basically the Jobo bottles. They're very common in chemistry and film photography with two rollers that have, uh, hold a round tank. So it can do Patterson, it can do AP, it can do Jobo tanks and even I guess some metal uh, tanks. And then it has like a motor that you basically put on top with a rubber wheel and you control the speed. So you're heating the water with the sous vide, you're doing a timer with a phone or an app or a little watch or clock. And then you basically just have to lift the motor, open the lid, empty the chemistry, put the chemistry back in and do it. So it's kind of like a Jobo CPE3 without a lift or a CPP whatever without a lift. But for $3.99 entry level price and $4.99 once it sold the first batch. So super cool machine. Honestly, I highly recommend it. Then from Veloy, uh, people that work with me, there's a scanning hood. If you're into scanning with Veloy, they made a very inexpensive scanning hood, which even comes with the option to buy the 3D printed files to make your own if you want to not just ship plastic around the world. You can just print plastic in your own house. So it's pretty cool. It only works with Veloy. Obviously, it's made for the dovetail design of the Veloy holders, but there is a scanning hood. Um, then we have Brighting Star 28 2.8 lens. This is a lens for Leica M uh, mount. It's a 28 mil rangefinder um, coupled, but it really looks like the MS Optics. So I'm kind of not a big fan of copying this hardcore, but it's available wherever that is available. I've never heard of this brand or this lens. Then we have Chroma cameras, which is a sponsor of the show, with the Chroma 6 camera and the Chroma 6x17, which came out a couple days ago. So these, uh, the 6 is the smallest camera. It's almost like a like a back of a Hasselblad, uh, but it holds Mamiya press lenses. It does 6x6 and has some cool features. Uh, and then the 6x17 is the other way around. It's like the widest boy you can get. Um, 6x17, a plastic fantastic camera with the mount, I guess, for large format lenses because those have a circle for 6x17, but you can get them at Chroma cameras. Um, then we have the Zintax and Bintax update. If you've never heard of this before, basically when FP100C left us, uh, people stepped up to do Polaroid and Instax uh, backs for our trusty and loved, you know, cameras. One of them being uh, the bin stacks and zin stacks for the RB67 and the RZ67. This is done by hand with a ton of parts, but they've made a humongous article, a blog post about everything that's been happening behind the scenes. But they're coming out, uh, or they're you know they're working on making more, and they've been delivering and shipping, and there's YouTube videos so you can watch if you want. But it's it's a cool uh, update of the behind the scenes of making a physical product. Then. We have Pentax. So uh, let's start with the lens. Pentax has announced two new lenses, two 50 milli millimeter lenses, both with aperture control manually, which means they will work on all cameras. It's not only electronically controlled like the Canon EF mount or EOS mount, uh, but they've made two versions, one with modern coatings and one which they call classic, which has like the more film older stuff with like, <coughs> um, with uh, flares and lower contrast and funky stuff. So, I mean, it's not bad, it's just different. So they have these two options, which is really nice to see that Pentax has continued keeping the line of manual aperture so you can use it on like old cameras, but also, you know, making stuff that is still usable in today's standards and old standards. And then they have a camera update, they've made a bunch of marketing noise about how the camera feels and the clickiness of buttons and all this stuff. You can watch it. It's very entertaining, but it is a lot of, I don't want to call it rubbish. It's a lot of noise to basically say, 
This camera will have like a mechanical advance. It won't be a motor inside. And it's cool because of that. That's basically it. But I'm super excited for Pentax, don't get me wrong. I just find it very extensive. And it's very good for marketing. So on every blog is in this news right now. It's, you know, the stuff that people want in today's world. Then we have negative supply with the light mini, the source mini. This is negative supply, small boy for scanning. So basically it's a light source. It's entry level price, also smaller. It doesn't do like four by five and stuff like that. You can check it out in the link below. Then we have an article about how Fuji is committing to paper and chemicals. But this is something I've seen before where Fuji representative of some random place, this time it's Europe, says, yeah, I've talked to the Fuji guys and they've said that they will never stop making the stuff we love. Two weeks later, something's discontinued and the guy was wrong. So I hope he's not wrong. This is my wishing, uh, wish uh, thinking, hopeful thinking experience with Fuji is that when someone says, is nobody's gonna touch this emotion, it disappears the next day, but hopefully it's true. But Fuji commits to paper and this is uh, RA4 paper, which is both hybrid. So it works in the chemical process, but also works in the, opt uh, the digital optical process, but with chemicals. So it can be used in the darkroom by people like me or it can be used in a lab with machines that I could never afford because they're more expensive than a house. So it's pretty cool to see if they are committing to this because chemicals for color is gonna be one of the problems that we might have in the future. Then we have B's processor, original processor. For those who don't know, Baunet Photo has a processor that's all very modern and very funky and does a lot of cool stuff but they've released the super, I think this is actually free download and I would check on the website because I've done the news like in weeks. Uh, it basically is a very inexpensive or free processor to do self-developing at home with tanks. So it's just a motor that spins one way and another way and so on. So you can check the link below. One of our sponsors, Ondo Cameras, is uh, dipping their toes. Look, I can even do it with my toes. Dipping their toes into the large format camera business with an actual non-pinhole camera. So they're moving to lenses and not uh, pinholes with the ACAN camera. This is a field camera, 4x5 camera, very pretty, very well designed, made out of beautiful walnut by Ondo Cameras. And it's going to be a Kickstarter and it will be a camera that does 4x5 and 4x10. I'm very happy I kept my two Lotus 4x10 film holders because now I can try it out. But this is supposed to aim in between like a entry level price point, let's think Intrepid, and maybe, a, you know, high end entry level price point thing, Chamonix, and in between, hopefully. But I don't know for any pricing. I've talked to Elvis a bit about it uh, and it's really cool to see them getting into this. Then we have Stenopeka with a 4x5 Air Force camera. You can go check it out on the link below. I don't have a lot of information. Stenopeka releases 4x5 cameras almost every six months. I don't know if this is a high end, mid end, or low end. Go check it out. Their website is terrible, by the way. So if Stenopeka, if you're watching this, please invest a little on your website. Every time I go, I don't know what is new, how to click it, where to find it. It's, it's really complicated. Then we have Film Lab Desktop. So Film Lab, Film Lab Desktop app has come out with version 2.5. And I think for the first time since this app on software has been out, they made a manual. And I was working on a video, which I hope to do about how it works, but it's a beautiful software to invert and convert your film scans. So if you're digitizing with a camera or with a scanner and you want, or even with your phone and you want to invert, uh, Film uh, Lab has the desktop version uh, 2.5. It's really nice. It has like a nice smartness to the film and the way it works. It's really cool. I really like it. And Abe is a great guy. I interviewed him years ago. Uh, I love what he's doing. So then we have Graphlex GraphLock adapter plate. This is very quirky and strange and niche and probably nobody watching this will probably buy it. But for those people that have a Graphlex Super B, Super D, I think those, you know, the Reflex ones that shoot with like a mirror and a focal plane shutter and whatnot, those backs usually are not Graphlock. So um, Graphlex Parts has made like an aluminum back end that you screw onto the camera that then you can use a Graphlock from a speed graphic pacemaker version 65. Go check the website if this is something that sounds down your alley. 
It's extremely complicated, extremely niche, but it's extremely cool if you need it. I'll leave the link below. Then we have Ikigai Lab. Uh, they reached out to me. If I haven't answered your email, it's because I'm terrible at emails. Uh, telling me know about their plastic recycling uh, program. So Ikigai, I mentioned in the news forever ago, but Ikigai has been trying to reduce the plastic waste that we use in film photography. Every roll of film that's 35 mil that is not Santa Color, we don't use that in Santa Color, use the plastic canister to keep the film fresh, the dry, and you know everything that you need for film. And that problem is every time you use it, it goes and it doesn't usually get used. Some people use it for camping gear, for like salt and pepper. Some people put their 420s inside. Some people, like I do, I give it to my kids that use hot glue guns and wiggly eyes and make little people, it's pretty fun. Uh, but Ikigai has found an actual upcycling of it, which is, I guess, making little people is upcycling. But, you know, um, with the hot glue gun. But they basically are recycling them into other products, film-related or not so film-related. One of them is a 35 millimeter case, I think 120, maybe two. I would have to check the email. One's a film tray for the lab, so you can have all the rolls on top and the little stickers for the labs when you're doing a thousand rolls a day. Another one is like a stool, like the one I'm using for the laptop right now to sit down, but they're making a bunch of stuff. And this is super cool to see someone in the film industry or film community, which is not a, you know, it's not Kodak doing it. It's like a lab in, I think it's Australia. Uh, I might get that wrong. Doing something with the canisters, super cool. Then we have, um, this was Peter Davison from Guy, and he wants a Zeiss Icon ZM, so get it because it's really cool. Um, then we have a update from Mint 35 millimeter camera. And I'll say something that I noticed, and this is not so much for the update, which wasn't great. It's in one of the second updates, I think the, not the last one, but the one previously to that, they show the aperture, like small aperture, big aperture, and like really wide aperture. But one thing I noticed in the video is the camera does like a little AF movement, like e click, click, and takes a picture. E click, click, takes a picture. I wonder if the Mint 35 millimeter camera will have an AF option or will it be out of focus? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm very curious. And there's a lot more news, but I am not gonna throw them in here because I don't have the time to do that. And I'm gonna check in next week to try to fill in the news that I forgot. So I know about Cat Labs film and so on, but let's leave it for next week. So yeah, thanks to the sponsors. Thanks to everybody for waiting. Sorry for the long hiatus. It's been really nice to not do the news. I have to say, I love the news, but it takes me so much time and so much energy to produce that it's hard. And that's why today you get a half-baked news. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And those that are on Patreon and still supporting me, thank you so much. It really means a lot to have that support, even though I'm not producing the content that they have subscribed for. But I will continue to make content. Thank you. Goodbye. See you the next time. Oh, don't forget there's an email below. That email does work. Just I don't answer. Thanks and bye.